My great-great-grandfather purchased the land here on Woonsocket Hill Road. They set up a dairy plant, started selling milk directly to the community, and then slowly we added the bakery over time and grew it to the business that we have today. Historically, people have always asked us for ice cream. Do you have your ice cream? Do you make your own? We sold other people's ice cream for a long time to go with cakes, but yeah, we were a bakery before we started doing ice cream. We didn't have any one person that wanted to take that ice cream thing and spearhead it until Catherine came on. I was obsessed with making ice cream in high school. I got an ice cream machine for Christmas. My mom and sister got it for me. And my mom comes home from working. She was so patient and just kind of like talked me through the science of it. Having that background of going to culinary school and knowing like how to make a custard and what, you know, what that actually entailed. But that's really how the right scoop started was like me at home using milk from the farm making these countertop ice cream flavors and, you know, serving them to friends and family and knowing that, you know, I love ice cream and I would love to have an ice cream shop someday. We like to describe our ice cream as cow to cone. When you go to like a small family mom and pop shop where they're making homemade ice cream, a lot of times they're making maybe, they're churning the ice cream there, but they're buying their mix from Hood or they're buying it maybe from another farm who makes the mix, but to have the cows and to make the mix and to also churn the ice cream, which are kind of like the three main components of getting ice cream from cow to cone, um, it's really unique that one business has uh, hands in each one of those pots, which we totally, we do that from start to finish. Step one in the cow to cone process is having happy, healthy cows. One of the biggest ways to help keep the consistent flavor of our milk and keep a high quality milk is we grow and produce our own feed for our cows. We grow approximately 145 acres of corn silage that will last us approximately one year. We will grow approximately 80 acres of hay ground and so that will you know, bring us over 220 acres of total land that we manage and we help maintain open space on those lands. These are the parts that really help us produce a quality product in the end, be it you know, ice cream, a uh, baked product, or just you know, a gallon of whole milk on the shelf. Step two in the cow to cone process is milking our cows every day at 3.30 a.m. and p.m. Step two in the cow to cone process is milking the cows. Getting up 3.30 in the morning, first thing you do, have a nice cup of coffee and get down to the milking parlor. Get them in the barn, make sure everybody's healthy. These cows are borderline our pets. We get to you know, work on the diet with the farm side and we get to make sure that the cows are producing the best quality milk. And then from there, it kind of starts flowing through our own little supply chain. Step three in the cow to cone process is transferring our milk via pipeline from the milk house to our dairy. The milk products that we make, the ice cream that we make, all of the milk that we're using is coming from the cows that we raise and care for on the farm. It's never blended with milk from other farms. It's really our own raw ingredient that we are the sole proprietor of. Step four of the cow to cone process is blending milk with other ingredients, including sugar and cream, to make the ice cream base. The cow to cone process uh, starts with, you know, we get raw milk from the cows, gets pumped up into a large tank we have here. We move it into a smaller blending tank, and when you're mixing together cream and milk and egg yolks and sugar and all these different things, it takes a really good blend to make sure that they're all mixed together correctly and evenly. That way, when you have a finished product like ice cream, you don't have one pint of ice cream with a lot of sugar and the other with no sugar. It really, really is important to creating a quality product. Step five in the cow to cone process is pasteurizing and homogenizing the ice cream base. And it gets pumped over into our pasteurizer where it's uh, brought up to a certain temperature, it kills any of the pathogens that might be in uh, raw milk, and then it gets put through a uh, homogenizer, which uh, breaks down the fat molecules so that way they can't coalesce again and uh, create this separation, which is what happens when you don't homogenize milk, you'll have the cream separate from the milk. And then after that, it's cooled down and then it gets made in ice cream. 
Step six in the cone process is rapidly chilling the base and allowing it to rest for at least 12 hours. The dairy team, you know, strives every day to make sure that the quality product that we're producing is really high and all the other teams that are you know involved in the operation are always trying to elevate that and bring it to another level. Something that we're striving for with each batch of ice cream is thinking about the experience that someone will have while eating it. Whether that's at home enjoying a bowl of ice cream after a long day's work or a kid who comes to the scoop shop to enjoy a cone after a soccer game. It's a great experience to be able to come to the farm and to see the whole process and to you know be a part of that but at the same time, making our products more accessible to more people allows them to experience the high quality that is our products on a regular basis instead of it being like a luxury item. Step seven in the Cowdicone process is when we transport the ice cream base from the farm to Wright's Creamery in Providence. My role at Wright's Dairy Farm um, is that I'm the creamery manager. So overseeing the scoop shop operations during the scoop season, operations happening at the creamery, which are scoop shop sales, retail sales, as well as ice cream production. Here at Wright's Creamery, we have over 3,000 square feet dedicated to ice cream production and retail sales. Our retail area, we have a full service scoop counter where you can order a cone or a sundae. You can eat it here or take it to go. We also offer our full line of milk, an extensive line of our ice cream products, including ice cream sandwiches, cakes, half pints, pints, and quarts, and other bakery items. Our production area is visible through the retail space. We have a viewing window where you can see the ice cream being made. Step eight in the Cowdicone process is adding the ice cream base and flavorings to the ice cream machine. Step nine in the Cowdicone process is removing the semi-frozen ice cream from the ice cream machine and adding inclusions made from our bakery. The bakery's role in that process is that we're able to make all our own mix-ins. So if they need brownies to go into a chocolate fudge brownie ice cream, or if they need cake that's going into the Funfetti ice cream, we make all of those things for them and they fold that stuff into the ice cream after it's been churned. So all of the mix-ins and all of the things that they need to create these unique flavors, we're able to provide it right on site. Step 10 in the Cowdicone process is that the ice cream is packaged and then frozen overnight in an industrial freezer. Step 11 in the Cowdicone process is utilizing ice cream in ice cream cakes and ice cream sandwiches. When you come here, you can go and see the cows. You can go and see the farm. You can see the tractors. You can smell the farm smells. You get the whole experience when you're here. And I think that's really a big part of it. There's still, I think, a value to seeing the way farming is done and what it can provide for the community. Serving the community it has been one of the cornerstones from the beginning, from the home delivery route that's carried on to, until now. And having the generation that my grandfather would bring milk to, and having you know my generation, their, and now their kids and their grandchildren, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling knowing that we can represent Rhode Island and um, provide something like this for tourists, for the people in the state, for the people in the community. And, you know, they come into the store and they can get fresh milk and the cows are just steps away. Everything happens right here and it's really hard to find that, you know, anywhere else. Something really, really special. Not everybody can get up to the farm. They can't travel there. So we're excited after 100 years of being in North Smithfield to be able to reach out and bring a little piece of the farm into Providence, into the big city, as we say. You can get our ice cream at one of our scoop trailers at the Wright's Creamery in Providence, or visit our farm and see the cows being milked in North Smithfield. 
Oh, my favorite flavor that we make is black raspberry. Um, I really love black raspberry Oreo. I'm gonna go with compost cream uh, is my favorite flavor that we make here. Chocolate is my go-to, but chocolate peanut with peanut butter swirl in it is, that's where it's at for me. Salted caramel is my favorite. I have two pints of salted caramel in my freezer right now because <laughs> because it's not gonna be on the menu forever, so I had to stock up. 